Hi, people. It's three o'clock on Sunday. Well, it's three o'clock central time on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So how's everybody doing? Who all is here? Say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. It is ridiculously gorgeous outside today. I have not. Hi, Blaze. I have not spent my time outside grounding, getting my vitamin D yet. That is coming up next. As soon as I get off of here, I am going to go. Hi, Neely. Hi, Skeeter from Texas. Hi, Jill. Hi, Dawn. It is 62, I'm sorry, 72 degrees outside. And it says it feels like it's 80. <laughs> it is so gorgeous. Hi, Steph. I'm assuming it's you, Steph. Um, Amanda, Connie, Lisa. Shauna, you made it. You never make it. You always have, you're always like busy doing other cool things like hiking. Rosa, hello. <clears throat> Ooh, 100. No, I'm good. That, that goes over my threshold for comfort. Yeah, no, I don't miss that at all. <clears throat> eh. Y'all, it's been like snowing fluff. Uh, hi, Cassandra. Hi. Hi, everybody. I know you so you made it. I'm so happy you made it. It is like literally snowing outside. The cottonwood tree has gone to seed. And so there's like tiny little fluffs everywhere. <laughs> so funny. And then yesterday we were sitting outside. No, two days ago, Bella and I were sitting outside and the sun was shining just right on our faces. And it looked like there was mist in the air. But it wasn't. It was all pollen. <laughs> I had a black shirt on. It was not entirely black by the time I went inside. It's like, oh, fantastic. Hi, Marty. Um, long story as to why I leave the channel name Alan. Yeah, I figured it was you. <laughs> hi, Annabella. Um, hi from Arizona. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know what it is where my parents um where my parents are. Oh, huh. I just got a notification that I was going live. That's helpful. That's hilarious. Well, at least some notifications are working. Hi, Kristen. Uh, so glad to see and hear you. It's going to be an interesting chit chat full of fat fat. I <laughs> love it. I'm going to wait a few minutes so that hopefully a few more people can hop on. Hopefully they'll get notifications that they should come and get on because today we're going to talk about food. I am sure that I will do some Oh, you know what? I meant to tag Dr. Boz in this. <laughs> My bad. I'll tag her on the replay. Ooh, yeah, 100. It's supposed to be like in the 90s next week, a couple days next week. <laughs> but 100 after 14 years of being in California where it reached 120. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm done. See, in Flagstaff, it usually didn't get that hot. Not usually. Amy, am I what? I'm waiting for the rest of that question. Don't you hate that when you're like typing and you hit enter instead of something else? It's just really funny. Waiting to hear how to up my food without going over my protein allotment, right? Mm -mm. Nope, I am not coming to Nashville. Um... I have got to stop traveling so much. I've got to get a handle on my health. And to do that, I really need to be home where I can get good sleep. So as hard as it was, I was going to go to KetoCon. Like I was going to go to KetoCon. But I really need to work on getting better because if I stay in ketosis, I feel so much better but I'm sleeping some days like 12 hours. And on those days, I'll wake up and my numbers are phenomenal. So I know that I definitely need it. I know <laughs> you're going to have to <laughs> FaceTime me during the event. I know Dr. Boz is going to be there too um, in KetoCon. I, I almost went, but I was like, no, I just, I've got to get better. And 
that's best done at home because traveling is is just like hard. Um, hey, Sherry. So I wanted to talk to you guys. Sherry's got some really good recipes for really high fat stuff. Um, hi, Julia. I 102 in San Antonio. That that might be the other reason I'm not going to Texas because <laughs> I don't want to. Um, yeah, Marty, Marty is one of the moderators in my mighty network and I've, I'm backing off of a little bit of what I'm doing there. I'm backing off of, uh, YouTube a little bit. I'm getting rid of the Thursday video and I'm exchanging it for another live. That one's going to be shorter. It's going to be probably seven o'clock, maybe like seven fifteen, uh, central standard time at night. Because my meetings with my Mighty Network are from 6 to 7 my time. So I'll probably give it like a 15-minute buffer so I can talk with people afterwards for a few minutes. And then I'll go live. Hopefully that'll make it good to where other people on the other side of the world can still make that live. Um, hopefully it'll be at a better time. I'm not going to let that one go super long. But we can talk about other stuff. Because editing another video is just, it's a lot of work. And sitting in this chair gets a little tough. So I need to, I mean, like today, my shoulders are fantastic. They aren't hurting. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, it's not easy to eat anywhere but home. Just got home from a church luncheon where they roasted a whole hog. I bet that was amazing. Mm. Sitting in my hot car soaking in the sun for a poor man's sauna. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like it. We got in the car after church today and <clears throat> Bella's like, oh, you got to turn on the temperature. It's so hot. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's precious. It was too funny. I'm doing super high fat right now and have been healing. Cellulitis went back to before I could eat meat. This type of ketosis is crazy. Dude, it is like insane. I've had a lot of people that have ended up getting like keto, like legit keto flu. You know, we're, we're carnivores. We're, we're, we're ketovores. We shouldn't get keto flu. Dude, like it's been kicking people's butt. It's, I thought for sure that we were going to be better off. No, no. Emily Penton. Oh, I should text her. I should be like, girl, get on. Hi, Artemis Hunter. Um, I'm on. I'm on a live on YouTube talking about you. There, I've, I've now told her I'm talking about her completely hits different this time. It, yeah, like the, the keto flu. Wow. Um, Emily was having severe pain, like all over her body and feeling just sick. Um, and so she ended up having to take medication. Like, we don't ever take medication. I'm taking meds. She's taking meds. We've got so many things that we're dealing with. But and had to actually start. She's been taking meds for a couple of days. And let me tell you, it messes up your numbers. Like, my glucose is super high in the morning. Hi, Shirley. Um, my glucose is really high in the morning when I have to take meds. It totally stinks. Yeah. So Emma was just telling them about keto flu <laughs> because you, it's, it's bad, like brain fog and fatigue and pain. Like it's like fibromyalgia pain. It's insane. Em couldn't even sleep. She had to, she had to take medication to be able to sleep. It was so bad. A great sense of energy. Never got the keto flu. Okay. Marty, we don't talk to you though. This is why we don't talk to you. Just like with iodine, she never had bromide detox. She never got keto flu. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, you have kind of been through a lot already, Marty. <laughs> so maybe the universe is like, we're going to take it easy on you for this stuff because you've already gone through cancer and chemo and all this other stuff. So maybe that's why, because your, your balance has to end up like really good now. Mm. Yeah. Em said the deep bone pain. It's bizarre. It's like you could feel something happening deep inside the marrow of your bones. It's so weird. But 
I take that as healing. I think it it's fantastic. Yeah, no position. Hi, Deborah from Wisconsin, closer to me than most people. Oh, my phone is buzzing. So we have, oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, we have, oh, good. You got Dr. Boz's book. You got acne. <laughs> Yeah, this she's got acne. Like I, I have some, like a little bit, like tiny little ones, and on my back, mostly. But she has one in her ear. <laughs> it's like I'm not like 14 again. Getting all this. Part of my RIA causes me not to be able to sweat to the point where I must on every day or get extreme flare-ups. The deep ketosis makes me sweat like a piggy. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, Shirley, to answer your question. Do I still do iodine? Heck to the yes. Because if I do not do the iodine, my energy is like completely nothing. And so the combination of the iodine and being in ketosis, I think has been magic for me. I'm still doing my full dose. Uh, not really going to disclose what that is because my dose is different than your dose is different than everyone else's dose. You have to find where your body feels good on its own with the iodine. So start low, start a couple drops of 2% salt load. If you don't have great kidneys, don't think you're going to be able to detox it very well. Slowly go up until you get the boing. Iodine is awesome. Never give it up. Oh, yeah. Um, go up until you get the boing, which is like, oh, my gosh. My brain is clear and I have so much energy. Then I stay there. Stay there for a little bit until you start getting tired again. You're like, okay, the iodine's not working. More of your iodine receptors have opened up and they're ready to receive their iodine. So go ahead and increase it a little bit again until you feel good. Until you're like, I've got energy. I have mental clarity. I can get done what I need to get done. And then sleeping really well at night is also good. So um, that's that's my suggestion for that. I'm still drinking my fatty coffee. I take it in my fatty coffee so I can't taste it. Is it optimal? I don't care. It works. <laughs> I can certainly feel a difference. And if I have to take one more drop to compensate for what the coffee may or may not be doing, whatever. It's, it's fine. I like doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm so glad that you made it to a live, Lisa. Oh, you love your keto mojo? I love my keto mojo too. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Boz's books are amazing. Oh, speaking of Dr. Boz's books, if you guys have gotten her books, um, if you haven't down below, there's going to be linked my Amazon store. I linked them. They're in there along with keto mojos and everything else. If you have ordered her books, any of her books, please go in to the Amazon store, the Walmart, wherever you got it from and leave a review. That helps out these creators, writers, people like so much. So buying the book, I know that she would say thank you for that and appreciate that. But if you guys can go and leave a review as well, five star, if you think that it's worth a five star review, just saying, I'm leaving five stars. Um, then you, it, it helps like with the algorithm if there's, there's a lot of things that it helps with. So please go do that. I think you can leave a review on Audible too. Um, you can actually go in and review the book and leave feedback, which is, isn't Audible like attached to Amazon now? I think they are. So you should be able to do that. Even if that's not Audible. Um, just got my MCT oil and blender today. Ooh, how cool. How long do folks blend? I tried years ago and I hated it. So what I do is I put one whole egg, my MCT and my butter or my coconut oil and my butter, no matter, you know, depending on what I'm going to use, um, in the bottom of my, it's not my Yeti, but my Yeti cup. And I take my immersion blender and I put it down in there and I turn it on and go bzz, 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 and I just let it run while I pour hot coffee into it. Then it tempers the egg so that it doesn't cook into like solid little chunks, but it still cooks the egg. So you're not drinking a raw egg. You could always just do the yolk and not the white. 
um, to answer your question, I'll, I'll try to show you a picture. Hopefully the glare isn't too bad. Um, this is the one that I get. It's the Lugol's original. You have to go to lugolsnaturals.com. And then this is their 20%. This is what I am on right now. But I started with the 2%. And then I worked my way up. I also keep the 2% around for all of my animals and my kids as well. So I give Bella um, two drops of this one every day. Whenever she has her milk, I'll put it in that. Um, our animals, we've been putting it in their water because... Iodine helps you to fight off infections and viruses and bacteria. And, you know, there's the, the new bird flu. Good night, Annabella. Bye, sweetheart. Sleep good. Um, there's the, you know, the bird flu thing that's supposed to be coming. So we have been doing iodine and B vitamins and even colloidal silver for our birds to try to help boost their immune system so that they can handle whatever may come. So far we've been fine and we haven't had any problems. So maybe it's working. That would be fantastic. Um, let me see. Um, you've been told not to do extra iodine because of your Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I would say to that, you should ask an iodine literate doctor because most doctors will tell you that if you have, I love you too, Annabella. Most doctors will tell you that if you have um, Hashimoto's that you shouldn't touch iodine, which is usually incorrect because they do not know. So I would say find an iodine literate doctor. Um, yeah. And Marty's right. Um, every cell in your body needs iodine. It's not just your thyroid. Your thyroid is what uptakes a lot of it but every single cell in your entire body has an iodine sodium receptor. So every single cell in your body needs iodine. So you don't want to really withhold from the rest of your cells. So yeah. Okay. Food. Thank you, Rosa, for getting me back on track. Um, food. I'm going to do a couple of what I eat in a day. It is so boring. Like it is so boring. It's funny because, um, <clears throat> Dr. Boz just put out a what I eat in a day. <laughs> it's like four minutes long because it's the same thing over and over and over again. And it's simple and it's nothing fantastical. I got to tell you that is one thing about the higher fat and the more moderate protein. Some people would call it low protein. I, someone told me, where did they tell me? maybe in Facebook. I don't remember. But over in India, someone quote me, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Most women only get 40 grams of protein and men get like 60 grams of protein a day. And that's it. And they eat so many plants that that's where they, they do have a lot of health problems. I wonder if they were to switch the plants for the fat, what would happen? Um, and then in Dr. Boz's books might have been any way you can. I can't remember because I've like binged on everything of hers. Um, she talks about how people who were on ketogenic diets for epilepsy, like children that had been put on ketogenic diets for epilepsy, they had when they died, no cancer, no, like they had ridiculously healthy bodies when they died. And it was, it was noted that there was absolutely no cancer in their body. And that's not normal. Like there's cancer in everybody's body. It's just whether or not those have been activated or what kinds and where and all of that. But there was no cancer in these patients when they were on a ketogenic diet for epilepsy. So that was kind of a really cool, like noteworthy takeaway. I was like, I like it. I like it a lot. Anyways, so I seriously, I, I eat the same stuff over and over and over again. I wake up in the morning and I take my ketones very, very, very first thing in the morning. Now, the reason you want to do this, it's not going to give you your best numbers. 
but it's going to give you an accurate representation of what your health is doing, what your metabolism is doing, what your liver is doing. It's going to look and it's going to see, okay, if my glucose numbers are higher in the morning, then you're still popping glycogen bubbles. You are still emptying out your glycogen reserves. And that's why you have a higher glucose in the morning. You can actually, yep, I take my reading before my coffee. So like literally I wake up, I'll go to the bathroom. Sometimes I'll do my makeup first, but most of the time I just spray my hair down to get it wet because I got crazy hair in the morning, just, just a little bit. And then I'll go downstairs. I will drink my water on the way downstairs. I'll get down there and I go sit at my breakfast table and I have my keto mojo sitting right there on the breakfast table. So then I will take my readings right then. Like this morning, my glucose was quite a bit higher. It was like 86 or something. It was, it was not fantastically like what it should be. Let me go look real quick. Um, that's not the right one. That's the right one. So this morning it was 83, but my ketones were 3.6. So I had a good Dr. Boz ratio. Just for me, I know that because of pain and or not enough sleep, my blood sugar in the morning is generally higher. The day before that, I slept a solid 10 hours. <laughs> and I think I only woke up twice in those 10 hours. So I got a really good sleep the night before I woke up my glucose was 68 and my ketones were three, 3.0. So I am definitely healing. Like I'm getting amazing numbers, but it's just, it's really fun to like look and see what happens to your body when you're stressed, when you don't sleep good, when you eat too much protein, like you can adjust the chemistry of your body with a lot of different variables. So the very, very, very first thing um, that I do in the morning as I walk downstairs and I take my readings and I generally only take them once a day. I could take them later on, but I just, I've learned what my body does. Like after my coffee, my fatty coffee, my blood sugar will drop and my ketones will skyrocket every single time. So if I woke up with a 3.6 today, and then if I had checked after my fatty coffee, like 30 minutes to an hour after my coffee, my ketones would have probably been up in the fours or fives and my glucose would have been lower. But I've learned that because I drink a super fatty coffee, it messes with my chemistry. I can tweak my own body's chemistry and I can put myself into a deeper level of ketosis just because of all the fat that I drink in my coffee. Now, um, I choose to do all of my calories in about four hours. And I start that with my fatty coffee because I love my fatty coffee. And that is how I take my iodine. I have not yet found another way to take my iodine that does not involve the coffee. But I got to be real. I'm actually almost getting tired of the fatty coffee. So I think I'm going to have to try to find like a new way to do things. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I was like, I never thought I'd get tired of it, but I'm kind of like, I'm good. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'm just catching up real quick. Uh, glad I was wondering why my glucose was so high. Yeah. You're, you're still emptying out your glycogen stores, like your liver, your muscles, you're still, or you didn't sleep well. And have you guys ever heard the saying that you lose the most weight overnight? Like that's been something that I've been told over and over and over again, is that you lose the most weight at night. And if you kind of do your own little experiments, you'll see that if you weigh yourself in the morning, you'll be lower weight than if you weigh yourself at night. Because yes, you've eaten, you've drank all of that, but then you'll go to sleep and then you'll wake up and you'll weigh less. So you actually lose a, a lot of weight overnight because you're breathing out, you're, whether it's ketones or just water weight, all kinds of stuff like that. 
So um, the better you sleep, the more weight you lose. <laughs> At least that's what I've found is if I can sleep better, then I lose more weight. Um, autocorrect hates the word ketogenic. Yes, it does. It's hilarious. Um, let me see. I got to find out the nerve. Should I live or was taste like bologna? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's the concept of those foods that we hate. So I drink my fatty coffee. I nurse that for like 30 minutes probably. And then I eat whatever it is that I'm going to eat. Some mornings I have a, um, a breakfast sandwich. I'll make some of the yolk waffles. Down below in the description box, I linked the yolk waffle, waffles, the yolk waffles. I linked those. I will have yolk waffles. I will put some sharp cheddar cheese on that. So far, cheese has been fine for me. I haven't had any negative side effects and I'm still losing weight even while eating the cheese. I'm not getting any extra pain. Um, I'll do some sharp cheddar. I will do one egg and one yolk and then one to two sausage patties. They are the great value from Walmart sausage patties that are not fantastic, but they have a lot of really good fat in them. And that is what I will eat for breakfast. And honestly, at that point in time, I'm pretty much done. Like, I don't need much else for the rest of the day or anything else. Um, I drink water after that. I have never been a really big fan of electrolytes for me personally. The reason is whenever I drink electrolytes, my heart starts to palpitate and my ankles swell. So I don't know if it's potassium. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't understand it. And without getting some interesting tests, I wouldn't be able to figure it out either because blood tests for electrolytes are not a good representation. Um, so I, I don't use electrolytes. Richard, however, uses like one to three packets a day and he feels best when he uses those. So you can sip on those all throughout the day, whatever makes you feel the best if you need them. If you are going to do the electrolytes, and you are trying to get good readings and you're trying to do like a four hour eating window, you should not drink the sweetened electrolytes outside of those four hours. And this is kind of where Dr. Boz's protocol is different from a lot of other people who say OMAD, but then they're drinking sweeteners in their tea or their electrolytes, or they're having like the fatty coffee, but they're not including that in their one meal. They're saying, you know, well, I eat one meal, but then I also have a whole bunch of other stuff throughout the day that is still stimulating my insulin to some extent. So yeah, like the drops from keto chat would be fantastic. Uh, Richard uses the element, the raw unflavored. He makes like a whole drink with it. But that's what he's been using. Um, he likes the their sweetened ones and and as well. But trying to get all your calories in, like one hour to four hours to six hours to eight hours, it just it completely depends on where you are. But that is kind of like the gold standard is starting to get all of your sweeteners, all your fat, all everything in, in about four hours. Like that is my goal. That is my standard because I'm going for a deeper level of ketosis. My body has been playing very nice. It has not fought me at all. Like my glucose is a little bit higher, but my ketones have been fantastic. So I'm getting into the deeper levels of ketosis like I need to. Uh, 20 to 40 on the Dr. Boz ratio is immune system activation. So if you have an autoimmune condition, getting between 20 and 40 is going to be really good for activating your immune system, waking it up and going, hey, yo, remember how we're supposed to work because you're not doing it. That's where you kind of want to do those numbers. Anything under 20? The 20 and below is like cancer fighting. And she says in her books, you need to work with your physician if you're going to be doing that. And it could very well be because of things like 
the severe pain that Emily was having, like her body is playing super nice too. She is able to get into extremely deep states of ketosis, like very quickly. So making sure that you are at least letting your doctor know what you're doing and hopefully educating your doctor as well, because doing these deeper levels of ketosis, you really shouldn't do it on your own. Like you can hurt yourself. You are altering the chemistry of your body. So be aware of that. Um, Especially if your pancreas is a little bit tired and not producing enough insulin, it will affect how many ketones you make and controlling those ketones. Ketoacidosis is the presence of too many ketones in your body. Now I've heard, I think like the ketone levels of anything above 10, like 10 or above would be bad. So that is where ketoacidosis would start to come in. Anything below that is is okay. It's been like a year and a half since I've heard the number 10. So I could be not super accurate on that. Um, but yeah, so that that's honestly what I eat in a day. And then if I am hungry again later, I will have two more of the oak waffles with butter. And that's it. If I am hungry at night or say my family is having a sweet treat and they want me to eat with them, I will have those yolk waffles with cinnamon sprinkled on top. And sometimes I'll even put the allulose on top of it too. And then the next morning, my glucose will be in the 60s, maybe 70s, and my ketones will be up in the three point something range. So for my body, it's working. Okay, so Sherry said, is coconut cream as healthy as ghee? It's different. It's definitely got carbs in it. And that's one of the reasons that we have a 20 total carb limit because coconut cream, coconut milk, um, eggs, dairy, all of those have the carbs in them. And I know a lot of people, and I've been one of those people that says, oh, don't count the carbs from, you know, your animal stuff. If you're going for healing, you need to count the carbs from everything because there's a point where your body will have to up the insulin to deal with the carbs that you're eating. It doesn't care where those carbs came from. It still has to activate your insulin. Activating your insulin lowers your ketone production. It's a balance. You can never have high insulin and high ketones. It's one or the other and they shift back and forth. So if you're going for healing in those really good numbers, you do need to track all of your carbs from dairy, from eggs, from everything. Like avocados, people, avocados. Some people can handle an avocado. One avocado has like 22 grams of carbs. So it depends on the person. We all know Marty can handle it. Marty, I love Marty, but she can handle a whole avocado. I can't, it'll raise my insulin too much. Um, so if you're going to do the coconut cream, just keep in mind, it does have the carbs in it. So for some people, they're able to do it just fine for other people. They got to watch a little bit. My numbers aren't nearly that good. If glucose is in the eighties, I'm happy. (coughs) And that's, that's the, the bad part about me sharing my numbers is because people compare themselves to me, but I am not you. I spent a year out of ketosis, but I didn't get as damaged and as sick as I could have in that year. So my body rebounded very quickly over to the ketones. Like it was super happy to be back in ketosis. And it took me a little while to empty out my liver. And now it's the make sure I get good sleep and things like that. But Some people are a lot sicker than I am. Their bodies are sicker. Some people have prediabetes and or diabetes and you don't even know it. And when you start to run into this where your numbers just will not get better in the morning and your glucose is always high, you probably had prediabetes even if you were never diagnosed with it which means it's going to take you a little bit longer to heal. So in the book, Keto Continuum, 
this is the workbook, but in the actual book itself, she tells the story of David, whereas in the first one is her mom, Grandma Rose. She tells the story of David, and David is an undiagnosed diabetic, and it ends up taking him like 18 months before he's really like, it kind of goes over about 18 months, and it talks about his story and the progression that he had to go through, all the little things like, I'm being so good. I'm not eating carbs. I'm not overdoing anything. Why are my numbers so stinking high? And yet she's like, but that's because you're popping your glycogen stores. And that's a good thing because if you've been storing up glycogen in your liver and in your body for 50 years, you've got a lot stored up and you got to pop those bubbles. The only way to do that is to get your insulin really low. Yes, you can make ketones, but you're also going to pop some of those glycogen stores and you're going to use them. So they're going to be in circulation, which is going to affect some stuff, but you have to wait until your body can clean up everything. So staying the course is is always going to be the hardest part because so many people want to see like immediate results, but that doesn't always happen. It just depends on what you have going on inside of your body. Wish you could get good sleep. You have insomnia. Oh, that's horrible. Um, the for insomnia, turning off your screens, um, all screens, TVs, phones, um, these little guys, uh, computer screens, everything two hours before you go to bed. The sooner you go to bed, the better, because the the hours that you get sleep before midnight have almost double the impact of the hours that are after midnight. And it takes you at least six hours to get into a deep, a really, really deep um, like delta sleep, the delta wave sleep. You only dip in and out of it for a few minutes at a time because that's the that's the time in your sleep where you actually can't be woken up. And so we cannot be there for very long because it's actually dangerous. So our bodies will only dip down there for a few minutes. But when you dip down there is where your brain actually gets washed. Like imagine a dishwasher that runs through and it cleans out everything in your brain. So all those built up proteins and things like that, that shouldn't be there. They've kind of gunked up everything. You have to be able to achieve that Delta wave sleep slow wave sleep is what it's called to be able to wash your brain properly. And that doesn't happen until like six hours in. So if you are one of those people that wakes up every couple of hours, you're never going to attain that sleep. So um, turning off all of the screens, going to bed sooner if possible. And another trick that she taught us at the brains conference is what she calls left-handed loops. It's basically meditation for those that have no idea how to meditate. And what you do is you take a piece of paper and then you're going to take a pen, pencil, pen, whatever. You're going to put it in your non-dominant hand and you're going to make cursive letter L's over and over and over and over and over again for three minutes. You're going to set a timer. You're not going to talk. You're not going to make any noise. You're going to focus with your non-dominant hand on that paper for three minutes. And that actually helps to bring your brain down and it calms it down. There's an ant on my computer. Now there's a squish on my computer and it is going to help unclog your brain. So sometimes if you've got kids, you can actually do this um, in classrooms. You can do it with your own kids. If they're just really spastic and all over the place, you can do left-handed loops. So she talked about that at the brains conference. Yes. She just, she has a video out on that. Yes. It's cursive letter L's. They don't have to be pretty because it's just a continuous loop, 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 loop with your opposite, your non-dominant hand, because your brain has to focus on what it's doing while you're using your non-dominant hand. And if you're ambidextrous, then whichever one your weaker hand is. So that can help you if you do that several times a day, that can help to get your brain a little bit calmed down. You can do it before you go to bed at night. 
Um, if you're able to wake up in the morning and watch the sunrise, go outside, do some grounding, things like that, it's going to take some time to get your body into alignment to where it will begin to sleep again. And I mean, a lot of people are just really messed up on their sleep. Um, but getting rid of the electronics really does help a lot. And it's not immediate. You got to do it for like weeks before finally your body will begin to play nice. But the blue light prohibits melatonin from being made. And it's not a fantastic idea to take melatonin. Um, there's a lot of issues with taking melatonin it, as, as a supplement. It's much better if your body can make it on its own. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, oh, I'm like way, way, way far below, way, way behind. That's what I am. Um, I'm trying to go back. I miss it. Okay. You guys might just have to like start saying things again. <laughs> um, yes, I do have that. Not much since keto getting anxious and palpitations. Yeah. Um, the palpitations would be an imbalance of electrolytes. Um, could be very specifically magnesium. Dr. Boz talks a lot about magnesium, a lot about the importance of magnesium. And now we're all deficient anyways from standard American diet. So then when you go over to keto and we drop all those electrolytes because we dropped all the water, bye bye more magne magnesium. So not helpful. Um, let me see. Taking meds for acid reflux, switch to ACV tablets before keto to continue this. And then keep a couple of years took away. Um, yeah, it does take a long time for your stomach to heal from that. <sighs> Let me see. I'm out of water. That is so. The um, Dr. Boz ratio is not equivalent to the glucose ketone index. It's close. Oh, times 18. I see that now. I was like, what is that? Times 18. Oh, that's funny. I started supplementing with potassium, two tablets a day to decrease palpitations. I was getting them all day long, but now I only have them maybe once a week. That's good. Um, oh, yeah. M got her Dr. Boz ratio to 30. Yes, yeah, she texted you. She was like, oh, I took my ketones. Am I going to die? No, you're fine. You're good. Um, What am I doing with the egg whites? So good question. Actually, I like that question. I have seven cups of frozen egg whites in my freezer right now. <laughs> I pour, I measure it out. And I pour a cup of liquid egg whites into sandwich bags and then I freeze them flat. Because if I'm going to make the egg white bread for my kids, I don't want to have to keep buying the cartons of eggs and I don't want to waste them and I don't want to eat them. So that's what I'm doing with my egg whites. I'm saving them to make the protein sparing bread for the rest of the family. Um, I do give my dogs, I give my dogs a whole egg each, but I have seen some dogs, when they eat too many of the whites that are raw, they begin to lose their hair. So I don't, I don't do that. Um, and it could have just been a couple of flukes, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't do that. Yes, you also count the carbs from sugar alcohols like allulose. Um, and the reason for that is that everybody's body is a little bit different. Some people the allulose is going to affect you more. It is going to, um, the sweet taste can be enough to send your insulin through the roof. So it's better to just track all total carbs all the time. And Dr. Boz actually is not a big fan of artificial sweeteners or natural sweeteners or sweeteners, period. Like she wants you to learn to go without them. Just learn to go without them. And then if you want to use them once in a while, like later on down the road, then that's fine. But they're really bad on, for your adrenals. They're bad for your gut health. So going without any sweeteners is the ultimate goal, honestly. Is glucose number the same as blood sugar scores? Yes. Finger prick. Yep. It's the same. Um... Yeah. Julia, if you're sensitive to protein like I am, that you get a glucose spike eating too much of the egg white bread. Yep. Because you, it will, uh, it'll spike your glucose. It'll spike your insulin. It, it just depends. What did you miss? I don't know what you missed. You missed a few things. 
I'm sorry. I made it. Um, uh, serious cakes. If you don't have dogs, you can mix the egg whites with a bunch of cheese. Add some Italian spices, scoop and fry them up. It's delicious. That would be too much protein for me. Um, I ended up finding out that if I go over on my protein, it's not good. So another, the Epsom salt baths, I was doing the Epsom salt baths until someone pointed out that, oh yeah, if you have a septic tank, that's a bad idea. Yeah, I have a septic tank. So I can't exactly be pouring. Let me see. So far I've got 16 pounds of Epsom salt that have flowed down that way so far. Yeah, so I had to stop doing that. So I'm going to have to go do the floats. <sighs> My A1C is always below five. So I know that, um, yeah, your fasting blood sugar is probably down effect. I'm improving that. The lower my protein has helped push in the right direction. Um, yeah, I've heard some people say, you know, you'll never get rid of Dawn effect. True. But you can affect how high your Dawn effect goes with how much protein you're eating. So you just have to choose if that's what you want to do. You don't have to. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, maybe getting too much electrolytes. My ankles are starting to swell. Very possibly. Yeah. And that's one of the issues with the electrolyte blends the drinks that we have is that it is a blend of all of the electrolytes so you don't know which one is causing it usually with ankle swelling it's going to be the sodium could be the potassium but yeah because chances are it's not the magnesium it's probably not the magnesium um yeah the brainwash action is yeah that's the the whole brain's course in Pella was so amazing and talking about the importance of sleep is it's like a huge thing. She's like, I am, she said that she is not her kid's favorite person because she makes them go to bed sooner. Um, let me see. <laughs> Stocked up on collagen. Yeah, I did too. I have like six jars of collagen. Mm -hmm. Going to have to use it sparingly. I'm actually saving my collagen for emergency food, for emergency protein. Because no, I don't really want to like eat it because yes, it'll spike my insulin. But if we have a natural disaster and I can't get to the store, or if, you know, food prices keep going the way the food prices are going, might need to supplement a little bit of protein here and there. I'm actually saving my collagen for that reason. So it's like, ah, it's actually probably not a bad thing. Um, egg white ice cream. Oh no. Yeah. Egg whites too many. Um, oh yes. Wearing the blue blockers that absolutely helps too. Um, I have used, I use the iodorol. Um, I, so the non-dominant thing works is she said, whichever one is your weaker hand, Lindsay, just in case you're still here. Um, but it does still work. <coughs> Um, blue blockers will absolutely help. Amy, do you think skipping on electrolytes during the middle of the night when I wake up several times would affect my my morning blood sugar? S oh, sipping on electrolytes during the middle of the night when you wake up depends on if your electrolytes are sweetened. If they are sweetened, then that would probably completely be against what you want to do. Um, did you buy the ketone strips? I am planning to buy... Does it work? I use the Keto Mojo strips. Let me see. Um, I just did research. Unless it's huge amounts, hundreds of pounds, it is hapless. Oh, okay. So I can do it in my... Yes, yeah, someone said that. See? That's what I was thinking. I was like, wait, isn't Epsom salt, like, helpful for plants? So, and we have a lateral field. So I would think that it would be, like, okay. I'm going to do some more research. Never mind. I'm going to go back to that. I'll see raw turmeric root that's helped me every night about one inch. And next day, it's pretty good for me. Maybe you can try it too. Turmeric has a lot of oxalates in it. So anyone who is sensitive to or avoiding um, oxalates would have to be careful with the turmeric. What about high fat keto using unsweetened whipped cream spray for dessert? A lot of people do that. Like a lot of people can handle the, the heavy whipping cream. I cannot wow, does it make me exhausted, like falling asleep, sitting up exhausted. So I cannot do that. Um, so some more food ideas. Today, 
We went to church. I woke up. I took my numbers. I made my fatty coffee and I drank my fatty coffee all over church like the whole time while we were at church. I could have just not done it, but then I don't get my iodine in. I'm working on it. It's a process. And then we came home and I made hot wings and ranch. And I tried the ranch with the sour cream and my mayonnaise and I'm not exhausted. So I think I can handle sour cream too, but the hot wings are down below. That recipe is also that video is linked. I went back and watched it. Wow. That was like so long ago. And the music is really loud on it. It never used to be like that. So I don't know why. I'm sorry that the music is really loud. But um, so the recipes are down there though. So I had eight hot wings. I always put it into chronometer to see how much I can have. And I plan it out. Because then I know. And I, I was like, oh, I can only have eight. I usually eat like 14. Oh, fine. <coughs> so I had eight wings. Eight of them or four of them were um, hot sauce. And I did four of them garlic parmesan. I could barely eat the eighth wing. I was so full. And I think it's because I was like copious amounts of ranch on my wings. I was like, uh, like pile it on there and eating it. It adding the ranch like totally changed how much I was able to eat. So sometimes I'll do that. Um, it, you know, and I was really hungry. Like my coffee had activated my insulin. So my blood sugar was lower. And I could tell that I was like really hungry. And then I had to stand there for almost an hour cooking them. And with the extra fat, I was able to stop at like eight wings. I almost didn't even finish the wings. I was getting so full. Um, made me hungry, right? It's hard to stop. It. Uh, let me see. I never thought of that. Why am I... So and gets tired so fast. Yes. Like the heavy cream hits me way too hard. Um, oh, Skeeter said it would be great if y'all hit the like button. Thank you very much for that. Um, but yeah, um, I, uh, wings or a burger. I'll do a burger. Sometimes I'll do those same yolk waffles. Like literally my life revolves around those yolk waffles right now. Um, so I'll make yolk waffles. I'll do a quarter pound burger patty, which is cooked down to like 3.5 ounces. I'll do two slices of cheese. I'll do one egg yolk. I'll do a pickle. I will do two tablespoons of my coconut oil mayonnaise, a tablespoon of the no sugar added ketchup, and I'll eat that. It is such a mess. Like, wow, it is a mess, but it is so filling because of the yolk waffles and then the mayonnaise and then the cheese and then the egg, um, the egg yolk. <coughs> I'm going to have to go get a thing to suck on because my throat is very, very, uh, so the question is what about glycine? Um, it depends on what it does to your body. Anything sweet has the potential to raise your insulin and insulin is the enemy of ketones. So it depends on what you're going for. It would be better to just get away from all of the sweeteners, all the sweet flavors, no matter what. Your body will learn to like it. You just have to be consistent. But I mean, it, it helps you get away from all of those things. And then if you want to bring them back in and use them sparingly later, you can. But a lot of people find that butter itself tastes plenty sweet when you remove the other sweeteners from your life. And it's a process. It's one step at a time. You don't have to get rid of all of the carbs and all of the sweet flavors too. But kind of moving in that direction would be the goal for achieving ultimate health. Um, Sherry says, I don't track anything and going back to high fat is definitely the way to go to heal up faster for sure. Yeah, my own experience. I also work out a lot and it helps more than anything. Um, I don't make the egg white bread or use egg whites. I wish I knew of someone close to take them off of my hands. 
I know. You could probably freeze them and save them as protein for the future. You know, like I said, if you have room. Um, is there a pie store that makes meringue near you? That's actually a really good idea. What about chocolate? No chocolate. That's sweet. Um, chocolate on its own is not sweet. It depends on what sweetener they put with it. So if you were to get like a 100% cacao bar, then that wouldn't be sweet. And that would be fine. But it is still a plant. It does still have fiber. So it will still have some carbs. So you would just have to track that as well. Um... Oh, nice. The other night, my sleep app showed I was in deep sleep most of the night. I guess my brain was washing and rinsed several times. Um, so the two uh, devices that Dr. Boz recommends, and, you know, she specializes in brains, um, is the Muse, M-U-S-E headband. I don't have affiliates for either of these. I will have to reach out to them and see. The Muse headband, she probably does, though. If you go to Boz MD com and then look under her favorites. She should have links there and probably have affiliates for that. Um, Muse headband and then the Aura Ring was the other one that she actually recommended at the Brains Conference. So those are two ways that you'd be able, they're accurate ways to track your sleep because a lot of the other ways are kind of not, not as good. Um, so let me see. What am I missing? Oh, there we go. Back down to the bottom. Okay. You got good recipes for burger patties. So it's not. Um, so on my channel, Noah's Burgers. That's the burger patties that I use. It's 100% beef and we sprinkle Redmond season salt on it and then we cook it and that's it. So that is it. I know the heavy cream. I know it's amazing, but it's so not fantastic, unfortunately. Um, what do I put in my fatty coffee? So in my fatty coffee, I do 12 ounces of coffee. I do one and a half tablespoons of butter, one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil, or you can do MCT oil. That'll help get your ketones up even higher, even faster. And then I do one whole egg. I could do just the egg yolk, but... Um, I like the creaminess and the frothiness of the egg whites in there as well. And I work it into my protein every day. So I, I know that it's in there. Um, Left-handed loops. Yes. Dr. Boz just put on a, a little short about the importance of meditation. So she actually talks about the left-handed loops um, in her meditation video. Use two egg yolks in your fatty coffee. Yeah, and the egg yolks definitely have more fat than protein in them. So they, they don't have as much, obviously, as the white did. Oh, yes. The Muse headband is, it is pricey. Like, you would really need, need to need that. You would, like, need to need that because it's expensive. Um, I got the Bulletproof brand MCT down in my Amazon store. Um, it's linked down in there. I think it is. Maybe it's not. I might have to go add that. I'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's what, and then I'll put a pinch of salt in my coffee as well. Sometimes I will do stevia. Sometimes I will not do stevia. It just kind of depends. Do I eat bison? No, it's too lean, like way too lean. I, I do. I've never cared for bison. I always like the fatter cuts of beef. Um, so back to food. The other thing that I absolutely love and do not gag, please, it's the sardines. I love those stinking sardines. And I get the ones that are in olive oil. They are fantastic. I actually get the boneless, skinless ones because the skin on ones are slimier. So I couldn't eat them as well. So I got the, the boneless, skinless in olive oil. I will eat it right out of the can. They are so good. Let me see if my husband will bring me a few things because I'm not entirely sure which brand I'm getting. Um, so can you bring me sardines, please? <laughs> I ask him the most random things. I love my husband so much. Um, oh, yes. 
yeah, the loops would be fantastic um, for dealing with grief. Um, that will absolutely, oh yes. Oh yeah, I did know that, Stacy. Um, and you lost your, oh seriously. You poor thing, I am so sorry. Go do some loops and take a really, really, really salty Epsom salt bath for like 45 minutes and turn off all electronics, all of absolutely everything two hours before you go to bed and take care of you. Uh, music would be okay as long as it's like your little thing is a little ways away from you. I am so sorry, sweetheart. So the way that I like my sardines is I now can eat them right out of the can with salt with the oil. The oil helps so much. Like when they're in water, they're really, really fishy. But the oil helps to just really bring down everything and it mellows it all out. So I'll eat them right out of the can. But you can also turn it into tuna salad. So if you're going to do cream cheese, you could add some cream cheese. You can do some mayonnaise. You can add some pickle relish and some mustard and some mash all that up together you would not know that it wasn't tuna. And then you can eat those with, if you're doing them, the little wisps, um, little cheese things, you could eat them with pork rinds. You could eat them with like fried chicken skins. Oh my cow. Um, if it fits into your, you know, your protein amount, then you could eat it with the protein sparing bread too. Um, just have a whole sandwich. So good. Um, let me see. Julia said, I eat them in self-made Caesar salad sauce. Oh, Y'all, I've actually been wanting to try salad again. Like, I want to try salad again. My husband did not see my text. So let me see. Um, Sardines in oil. Let me see if I can find. Oh, it's this one. Season. Let me see. Yeah, season brand. That's the one that I get right there. So I actually really like those ones. They taste like tuna to me. I mean, I think that they are fantastic. So I'll eat that. And you can put it on the yolk waffles. You can, you know, dip it, do all that kind of stuff. Tuna is fine. Um, the sardines, because they are a much smaller fish, they have less toxins in them. So they are going to be a lot better for you. They're going to have a lot less mercury. They're not going to have nearly the amount of toxins like tuna are freaking huge. Tuna fish, like yellowfin tuna, they are massive fish and it takes them a long time to get there. And they have to live in the polluted waters with the mercury and the everything. So the larger the fish, the more toxins it's going to have in it. So you're going to want to try to stick with the smaller fish if possible, like anchovies, sardines, those kinds of things. Because um, I love tuna, but so if I can replace it with the sardines and like literally fool my palate, I'm going to do that. Um, so let me see. Uh, other food ideas for let's say you have to go out to eat. You could do a burger. You could do cheese and bacon on top of that burger and just know you're probably going to go over a little bit on your protein, but I'm assuming you're not eating out all the time. You could take your um, yolk waffles with you to make a bun. I take my own mayonnaise and ketchup because I don't touch the stuff in there. Um, okay, Jana says, where do you go to figure out what's your protein? So Dr. Boz recommends that you eat one gram of protein per one gram of desired kilogram of body weight, not pound. So you can Google, you know, what's my weight in kilograms? Um, or, you know, this many pounds equals how many kilograms? You can Google that, or you can take your weight in pounds. And although, Jana, you know how to get kilograms. But for anyone else who doesn't know, um, you would take your weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2. And that's going to give you a pretty close estimate of what your weight is in kilograms. And then you would eat one gram for each of those. Now, that's a starting place. Um, for some people, you're going to have to go lower than that. For some people, it's okay to go higher than that. And it won't affect your insulin. Everybody is different. And it, and it totally depends. Oh, and I have to tell you guys this. 
I actually almost shot coffee out my nose this morning when I read this. Speaking of everyone is different. Um, but the older you get, you more protein that you need. Uh, yes, because it does get worse at absorbing it. That's why this is like, it's a range. It's different for everybody. You need to see where you're at. But remember those people who were on an epileptic diet, those kids, when they died at their old age, they still had muscle. They had no problems. They had no illness in their body and they were eating a reduced protein diet. So a lot of what we're being told, I'm not entirely sure if you are in ketosis, how much of it applies. Um, I thought you said desired body weight in pounds divided by 2.2. That gives you kilograms. You want to do kilograms to grams, not pounds to grams. Um, let me, okay, so Neely. Neely texts Lindsay and I this morning. And she says, um, hang on, I'm getting there. She says, I was listening to Dr. Dom Diagostino on a podcast yesterday, and he mentioned that in their experiments, they have found one species of mice that when they feed them a ketogenic diet would overeat, start hoarding food, and get fat. Me. Well, I guess I found my people. There are some people who the ketogenic diet does not work for. <laughs> there are some people that it's not going to be the magical answer for. I'm always telling you guys no one size fits all. And Dom Diagostino is finding the same thing. Like, I would love to tell you that this is going to work for everybody. But I cannot make you that promise. I think for a lot of people, it will work. But you have to want it for you to be willing to try it to see if it works for you. I don't think trying anything is going to hurt anyone for too long. And obviously if you start having extremely bad reactions to some <coughs> something, then don't keep going. Sorry to edit my <coughs> divided your desired weight. I'm dying. Mhm. Mm Dr. Boz has a very detailed program and a great community. Um her books, like anyone's like, what can I do? Read the books. Seriously, read the books any way you can. This is her mom's story, Grandma Rose, about fighting cancer. She talks all about the science behind keto and why you would want to do these things. And it's like so much stuff in this book. And then Keto Continuum is the next book. It is the follow-up book. This takes you on David's story. David, the name has been changed to protect his, his identity. Um, that is his story of being an undiagnosed diabetic um, in his 60s when he is doing this and he's, you know, not eating a ton of protein. Um, they, she gives you the formula in the book to keep your protein moderate because protein will raise insulin. Insulin is the enemy of ketosis. Um, Jana, you said bread. Bread question mark. What is this question mark? Um, like protein bread, wheat bread. What, what is the question mark for bread? And then I will wrap up and then we will get ready to go. 30 days of anything won't kill anyone. I mean, it probably won't. And if it does, this is not medical advice. <laughs> um, let me see. I was on four ounces only and it was enough a day. I'll recheck. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are, are eating three ounces of meat a day, five ounces of meat a day, and they feel fine. So from what I've been able to find, people are on a wide spectrum. Apparently about 10% of humans do well on a low fat, high carb diet. Exactly. So after eating a big steak, my blood sugar spikes so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to eat a very small steak if I want to burn fat. And that's, that seems to be a lot of, a lot of the time, the high protein is causing inflammation. And a lot of people, I think, don't want to admit that. They don't want to accept that. 
Um, Mary Lou says, I'm eating 11 ounces of Chuck and I am burning fat. Awesome. I am jealous because I cannot eat that much. If I eat that much, bad things happen. Um, all in one sitting. It, it gets to be too much for me. So, uh, Stacy, I had to go from a huge steak to four to five ounces only. Yeah, I, I usually eat like four to five ounces. So, not a whole ton of anything. Um, let me see if I'm accepting that. I'm just glad I know why I was gaining on carnivore. I know. I would love to say that you can just eat meat and get healthy. Some people can. I am not one of those people. Maybe you eat homemade bread flour. Um, I would never touch homemade bread flour because I don't know that for me it would matter where it came from. It still raises my insulin. Insulin is the enemy of ketones. I need to be in ketosis in order to heal all of my autoimmune conditions, deal with the possible, we're still waiting on the Lyme panel to come back. Um, hopefully it got there in time because with the mail being so slow, the, the thing actually says that they have to receive it in their office within 24 hours of the draw. So here's hoping that it made it there in time because the mail has been so slow. So down below in my Amazon store, in the description of this video, there is, it says, um, my Amazon link is there. You click on that and then it'll have a list, an idea list that, you, that says Dr. Boz. And her books are all in there as well as a keto mojo. Um, yes. Good night. Time from Epsom salt bath. 100%. Um, what do you think about the possible cancer cure they have developed? I don't know who they is, and I do not know what the cancer cure is. I just know that MD Anderson, um, the leading cancer center in America, wants their patients on a ketogenic diet for two weeks before they will give you chemotherapy. So that has something to do. But I think that's what I think. Um, no wheat for me, instant anxiety and depression. That's me. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if it's non-GMO. I don't care if it's ancient grains. I don't care if it's sprouted. I don't care. That is not going to work for me because it raises your insulin. And the insulin, Dr. Boz actually talked about why a lot of people who have dealt with mental health problems in the past, why they cannot go back to the carbs in any form or fashion, because your brain basically gets PTSD from the high insulin. And the insulin that was washing over your brain because of all of the high carb things you were eating before, it was literally killing your brain. It was killing my brain. And so when that insulin spikes too high again and it's kept up there for too long, it washes over your brain and it makes your brain go, oh my gosh, no, no. And it immediately begins to shut down again, which is why for some people, the going back to carbs will absolutely tank your mood, your mental capacity so fast because of the high insulin. I should interview Dr. Palmer. I have no idea who that is. I should look up Dr. Palmer. Um, let me see. Have you done any long fasts, uh, 36 hours or more? I have not yet because I am going slow because I don't want to be one of those people who rushes the process and then fails because I rushed it. She's very specific in the books. She wants you at each keto continuum for like a week at least before you move on to the next one. Now, because I was already low carb, because I was already, you know, not struggling with that part of it, I think it does change it up a little bit. Um, but I'm going slow. Because I have had really bad experiences with fasting before, and I wasn't ready then, but I pushed it. So I will not push it now. I will wait. And my numbers are fantastic. So I'm not entirely sure that I even need to. The continuums are the way that you're eating, how often you're eating, how many hours you're eating in, whether or not you're fasting, all of those in her book, Keto Continuum, look at the continuums, fantastic. But you move to the next one when you need to stress your immune system more. You move to the next one when you stall, when you're not getting the results that you want. You've been there for a little while to push and stress your metabolism. 
you move to the next one and you you kind of touch down you touch down and then you touch down you see if we can do it for like seven days depending on which one it is and then you go back up again so oh yes dr berry's interview with dr palmer yes um Pam, um, I love mayo. I make my own mayo. I don't use the stuff in the store because they use seed oils, which I find very inflammatory for me. Some people can handle the seed oils fine. Um, I would rather get better as much as I can get better. So I avoid the seed oils, but I make my mayo. That is how I get in all um, a lot of my fat is through sauces like mayonnaise, aioli, um, hollandaise sauce, things like that. So, okay, I'm trying to think. I think that's about all the food that I can think of. Like legitimately, that's it. I made the frosty one day. I about passed out. I was so tired. Afterwards, Julia, I have a video. It's actually titled, I finally made mayo. <laughs> because I have never been able to successfully make mayonnaise at home. This is the first one that I have ever been able to do. And I use coconut oil for it. And you throw everything into the thing. You use the immersion blender. You put it in there. You slowly pull it up and it turns into mayonnaise. Every time it is magic. But I have to do, I have to temper my yolks in order to get it to work. So that's what I use. Um, oh yeah, you can use the chosen brand avocado mayo. Works totally just fine. Um, I just made my first attempt at mayo fail. Yeah. No, you should watch my video. And I go through like tempering the yolks and pasteurizing the yolks makes all the difference in the world for my mayonnaise. Like if I don't do those, then it doesn't work. So um, I think the, the, the yolk pasteurization came from Steve over at uh, Serious Keto. So you know it's going to be good if it came from Steve. Um like the tallow for cooking and try the mayonnaise. I cannot stand tallow, bacon grease, or butter mayonnaise. Nope. I think that that is a horrible combination of things that should never have been put together. But that is just me personally. I do not like it. Absolutely cannot do sardines. However, I did try the liverwurst. Not bad. Even Dr. Buzz is um, bacon and cream cheese. You know what? You find what you got to do to get these things in because that's what I'm going to do. I'm not doing sardines every day. I'm doing sardines like twice, maybe three times a week. So, um, yeah, use bacon grease. We'll watch yours. Don't think, uh, a lot of people, oh, it tastes like tuna. I'm telling you, it tastes like tuna. If you get the stuff in oil and then make a tuna salad, you will not know the difference. It tastes like tuna. It's so good. But anyways, okay. I'm going to let you guys go. And hopefully that gives you answers to a lot of the questions that you guys had. Oh, you know what? There was a couple of questions that someone asked that I don't think got repeated. Hang on. Let me see. That's my doggy. Come here. <clears throat> okay. Is there a limit on coffee? Dr. Boz would say no because <laughs> she loves coffee. Um, I only drink one because I don't need any more than that and I don't want to mess with my sleep. Um, do I drink electrolytes? No, I don't. And if so, are they sweetened? Richard's, some of them are, some of them are not. Um, depends on how much you drink every day. Okay. Those are the two questions. So I, I asked those questions, Michelle, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So hopefully that answers everyone's questions. Feel free to come join me over in the mighty network. It is free. It is my community where we talk about all of this stuff, keto, carnivore. You want to talk about PSMF? That's over there too. I will answer your questions about all of that. Don't worry. <laughs> right? John and uh, you guys are, you guys are so late. Oh my gosh. John and Michelle. Just kidding. So um, if you have more questions, come join me in the Mighty Network. Come join me in my Facebook group where I can get to those questions. And then my people can also help answer those questions a little bit easier to join network. We'll figure it out soon. Yes, there's a welcome video. Go watch the welcome video. It shows you where like the replays are and things like that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I will keep you up to date on my fantastic high fat journey. Um, down six and a half pounds so far, sleeping well. Pain is almost completely gone. 
I'm loving it. So I'll see you guys later on in Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs>